Thank you. Oh, oh, this is a nice sound system. Um, hello, everyone. This talk is called Electron Featuring Sentry, new album dropping soon. Really excited for it. Um, I'm going to warn all of you that I tell a lot of dad jokes. Please feel free to laugh. It's actually better if you laugh because it's less awkward for me. OK, so uh, who am I? I'm a developer evangelist at Sentry. Um, does anybody here use Sentry? Heard of Sentry? OK, cool. Um, I will go into what Sentry is so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, I'm a blogger. I'm at Chloe Condon on most things. Feel free to tweet at me, um, send me a DM, um, take pictures, quote me, and the weird, quirky things that I say. Um, oh, this is a GIF that I will get into later, but we develop a lot of really fun content over at Sentry around the specific topic of observability. Um, and this one is all about uh, catching squirrels, which are a lot like catching the bugs in your application. So what's on the agenda? Why do we need error tracking? Do I need error tracking? Are you sure? Yes, I'm very sure. Um, so to give you kind of, before I kind of deep dive into what this talk is, this is sort of a shorter version of a longer talk that I usually give. Um, so what is Sentry? Um, I wanna give you a little background on the origin of this talk. I work at Sentry and we provide open source error tracking um, and we have multi-platform crash reporting. So we collect errors, we aggregate them, we provide the tools so you can prioritize, identify, reproduce, and fix each issue. So it's, it was conceived in 2010 and started as a tiny bit of open source code. And we've now expanded to have um, an incredible team with a bunch of contributors. Um, all of our uh, code is out in the open, so feel free to take a look at that and contribute. Um, so as a developer evangelist at Century, um, I talk with a lot of developers out in the wild, at, the conference or a meetup or in line for brunch because it's San Francisco. Um, and the most common question that I get is, wait, isn't uh, error tracking just the same as looking at my logs? Or isn't it, the, isn't it the same as logging? Or why do I need something other than my logs to find errors? Um, can't we just look at spikes in our metrics to figure that out? Um, so the point being, a lot of people still don't understand the difference between um, logs, monitoring, and observability specifically. Observability is sort of a newer buzzword, syn like synergy, like a new term. Um, but people don't understand that they can and should be using tools that are designed to work together and help and find diagnose these issues. I'm not here to pitch you, Sentry. I'm actually here to tell you that you need multiple tools to take care of this. Um, Sentry is just one of the tools that brings all of those things together. So um, in this talk, I'm going to kind of dive into each of these areas, areas really briefly because we're all engineers here and, and we know all of this. But um, what I want you to walk away from with this is a better sense of the value of each of these and how we use each one um, to have complete observability of your applications. So a lot of the problems that manifest in our apps um, they, they show themselves in different ways. So with the power of all three, we can have a complete view of how our app is working and what our users are experiencing and how it happened and who and what we need to fix it. Here's a very scientific visualization of that um, that I created for you. So this is logging and monitoring, and this is metrics. Whoa, awesome, observability. And then this is gonna be your application. when You have a full view of everything, whoa. Yeah, that's what's going to happen if you use all of these things. If you only use one, you don't get the, the dude at the end coming out of the ground. It's Captain Planet, I guess, coming out of the ground. Um, so obviously, logging, when did that happen? Um, the answer that question. And the fun thing is that a lot of times they just feel like a lot of background noise to us, but they're incredibly valuable or they're incredibly valuable, valuable when we have issues arise and um, we need to retrace our footsteps, uh, specifically the footsteps of our users. So a quick show of hands, like who after a long day of just like coding loves to go home, crack open a LaCroix bottle of wine and just read their logs. I hope not. <laughs> oh no, okay, this talk is for you, sir. Um, so you shouldn't have to do that. that. That's not a great experience for you, especially if you have a bunch of users. Um, so uh, a really great way to dig into the issue and figure out its cause, but no one should be scanning them on a daily basis. So do you get, do you get rid of your logs? Are they useless? No, logs are great. Um, we just need to find the way to harness that power and use it to their full potential. Um, so. I love telling this story because it's partially a funny story, but also relevant. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers this. So as we all know, or we don't know, maybe this is a learning moment. Um, in aviation, everything is documented. Everything from the most minor, like, oh, a wheel kind of 
skidded and have a, had a minor issue is reported. Um, so the benefit of them kind of dotting their I's and crossing their T's with this constant <clears throat> documentation and reporting is that the data allows the airline in industry to iterate, update, change airline safety policies, um, protocols, design. So here's an example. This story, um, an airliner with 144 passengers on board flew 600 miles as its pilots slept at the controls for more than an hour. That really happened. Um, they were believed to have nodded off as the plane flew on autopilot and then it caused it to sh overshoot its destination. So in the meantime, all these F-16 fighter jets were on the ground ready to escort them. They thought maybe it had, it had been hijacked. Um, and they insisted, the pilots insisted that they were engaged in a heated argument about airline policy, which honestly to me sounds like something two pilots sleeping would say to, um, to, to, to prove their point. But um, by the time the discussion had ended or they had woken up, the plane was, uh, was off course um, and flying over the neighboring state of Wisconsin. So how did they discover the pilots were sleeping? Well, as we all know, in the world of aviation, we have, um, we have black box, we have a, a cockpit voice recorder. Um, and most of the recordings in this are probably really mundane, right? Like, oh, what kind of sandwich did you have today? How are the kids? But in this case, um, you know, they obviously weren't talking because they were sleeping and that's how they figured it out. Um, so incredibly valuable in this case, probably 95% of the time, maybe not so valuable. Um, also, uh, let me go to my next slide here. Boop, they were sleeping. <laughs> Gotta love those animations. Okay, um, so the proof is really in the numbers here. Raise your hand if you've ever felt nervous on the flight. I do all the time when there's turbulence. So um, I'm always fascinated by the fact that uh, turbulence still makes me nervous, even though I give this talk. Um, so these are really the statistics here, and this really comes down to how, uh, how much these things are documented and iterated on. You're actually more likely to get hurt in an Uber or a Lyft on the way to uh, your flight than you are in your actual plane. Um, this is a great app to check out if you do get nervous on flights and you are too afraid to raise your hand. This is actually called Am I Going Down? And you put your, um, your number in there and it tells you the probability. So if you're ever feeling nervous, great app. Um, so, so after learning about all these clearly positive effects of documenting, um, like all of the different issues in, in, that we have, um, I tried to think of a world where everybody was accountable for documenting their issues. If they had any sort of like car trouble or accident, like think of all the lives we can save. And then I imagined a world where people would actually document that and my dreams were destroyed and I looked like this emoji because I know no one would do that because it's not automated for us and it really sucks to have to write, fill out all those things manually. Also, no one would do it. <laughs> um, so, but imagine if we did have all the, the, that data. And this is really similar to our applications, right? Like if we have all the data, we know what issues users are, are running into, then we're able to fix them. Um, the exciting thing is a lot of this is sort of popping up with newer smart cars like Tesla. There is a bug reporting feature. Um, and uh, it's really similar to how our, our error tracking and our logging works because a lot of the times users tweeting us passive aggressive tweets. Anybody love those from users or like your app's broken. Yeah, super helpful, right? And they like totally have the stack trace in them. No, um, that never happens. Um, so a lot of times when we get like customer support issues that are sent in, we don't have any data. Um, a lot of times these, sometimes these people aren't technical. Sometimes they are, um, but how often, I mean, I submit a lot of support tickets, but like how often would a typical user do that? You don't really know. So there could be a lot of issues that you actually don't know are happening. Um, so cool thing about logs is we don't have to manually fill out any forms or write summaries or rely on our users to send them in. Um, so uh, that's great. <laughs> and another place where we can kind of diagnose these issues um, is metrics, obviously. So, but metrics really answers the question of how many. Um, obviously, a spike or a dip is going to say uh, that something's going wrong or going really well, but how do you know what to measure? Um, so, really, really useful. I always like to say metrics look really great on a TV, um, your engineering, but uh, kind of, well, I have so many emojis in this. Sorry, guys. Um, so, my favorite example of this, um, so you can't rely on your users. Passive aggressive tweets, not useful at all. Um, do you rely on support to escalate the issues? Are, is your customer support team technical enough to understand like when it's a serious issue or not? Um, that can be helpful, but are they really gonna take the time to write in? So um, testing wise, how do we account for and get notified for things that are happening in our application? Like that weird edge case where someone puts an emoji in your form and you're like, what? And it breaks everything. Also, 
dogs are awesome. This is a very important metric. Um, so metrics are a great, great way to visualize it and totally alert us of those things. You're probably using a tool like Datadog to visualize it or maybe you have your own tools. Um, we integrate with Datadog and um, they have alerting, but how do you know what to alert for? So um, this is my, my favorite uh, example of that. This is my favorite part of the talk. So the logs really tell us the history and the story of what happened, but how do we know when something bad happens? So this is um, the most Atlanta thing to have ever happened. This is, they're about to explode this thing and they've got the shot perfectly set up. And I'm sure they practiced it a million billion times to make sure they got the perfect shot and the bus is there for the entirety of what they were trying to film. Um, so there's a lot of like, I, I recommend actually watching this at home because the voiceover of the person be, being like, no, bus, bleep, 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 like lots of cursing. Um, so when it comes to logs on their own, they're pretty limited. Yeah, it's perfect timing. It's like comedy rating here. Um, and there's ways to set up alerts when something bad happens, but um, how do you know what alerts to catch? Um, you can write as many tests as you want, but how do you account for the bus, the, this like bus that you didn't see coming in a million years? Um, so no matter how many you test something, something will inevitably break. We all know this. Um, and no one's building the perfect app. So how can you make sure you're being alerted? So um, lucky for us, Sentry works with Electron. So I like to kind of explain this idea of like, okay, so you have a mouse problem and then you set a bunch of mouse traps and then you realize you have an ant problem. So you get ant traps and then you get a squirrel. And you're like, what the fuck is the squirrel doing here? And you have to get squirrel traps. Do they even make those? I don't know. Um, but the point being, if you are, if you don't have any sort of system or like product set up that, that helps you notify you of when these issues are happening, it's going to be like doing a fire drill each time. Um, and, and you really need to know when uh, users are experiencing issues so you know when to fix them immediately. Because the difference between someone um, using your app, I mean, how many times have we all used Lyft and then Lyft doesn't work and we need to get the F out of the tenderloin so we open up Uber and use Uber. Um, and a bug can really be the difference between using an app and another one. So, so definitely make sure you're being alerted. So if you're interested in like more deep dives on this, we have a bunch of content at Century around observability specifically. Um, and it's all really quirky, like me, obviously. We have a Star Wars one. Uh, we're coming out with some fun content. Um, and uh, yeah, so check that out if you have an interest in that. Oh, Star Wars episode, there's two episodes, but it's like good episode one and two, so. Um, so what do we do? Do we replace our logs with error tracking? Do we ignore metrics altogether? Chloe, did you come here to pitch me Sentry? No, I didn't, don't worry. If you do want a demo, I'd be happy to give you one. Um, so this is the part where I tell you, you do need logs and you do need your metrics and you do need error tracking as well. And having all of th these three really allows you to not only be alerted, but diagnose the issues in your applications a lot faster, get it to the right people. I think of it as a developer toolbox, or in my case, woman in tech, developer purse. Um, I like fashionable accessories. So uh, best way to think about this is, you know, logging really provides you with that trail of events. Um, and Sometimes they're simply informational, but um, we want to make sure we capture all of the application crashes. So um, here's an example of uh, how it works with Electron. So this is basically an, an image of, of what it, an error looks like in Sentry. So this is our stack trace here. Um, we have different ways that we can track different things. So if I want to grab the username, if I want to grab the um, user ID, or perhaps I even want to know what browser they were on when they ran into the issue, um, what the... Uh, Let's see how long ago it was. So this is obviously one issue, but I can click through it and see all of the different instances of this error happening. Um, also, let's see. So we have an Electron SDK, um, and uh, it, much like all of our other SDKs, we have breadcrumbs, um, we have device and operating system information, and of course, um, high quality stack traces and source map support. So. Um, Let's see, here's another image. So if your app relies on native extensions or um, spawn subprocesses, then you'll be happy to learn that the Electron SDK actually also captures native crashes. Um, and it includes the same breadcrumbs, context information, um, all of that kind of stack trace info that you would need there. Um, that means you'll see exactly where the user clicked just before a crash happened in C or C++ or any other native language that you're working with. So super easy to add. This is literally the code that you use to put Sentry into your application, um, can be configured really easily. More options is obviously where you would put different customization, customizations. Um, we plan to add a lot more features in the future. Um, and obviously, if you want to contribute and build 
some of those features, uh, you're more than welcome to. Um, this is a, a feature that you can add that I really like. Um, it's a user feedback feature where when issues run into, or when users turn into issue, uh, issues much similar to when we would be writing term papers and we get this lovely alert from Microsoft saying that everything had been deleted and do we want to submit a crash report or throw our computer across the room? Um, we have the same thing with Sentry. So we have this, which you can set up. Um, so obviously the user would fill out their name, email, what happened. This is a lot easier than um, having to rely or hope that someone submits a support ticket. Um, also a really great way to get in contact with anybody who's experienced this issue. You can send out an email and be like, hey Chloe, I noticed that you ran into this issue, it's fixed now. So it really gives you that one-on-one -on -one support if you're dealing with a smaller product. Um, and context is key in this case. So not only do does this pop up for them, but when you get this issue on the developer side of things in Sentry, you will be able to see that feedback in the bug report here. So Ben ran into this issue. He said, as I was typing in my password, the application crashed. Um, we also get his email here, his ID, his IP address, and then all the other info that we would get there. Um, didn't go into it, but breadcrumbs are also something you can add for any sort of like button clicks or action to like really see that, that path that the user went on. Um, so I'm just about done here and I'll put my hand sanitizer out for everyone. Um, so there's really no one size fits all tool here. Uh, these three things really work best. Um, logging errors and metrics to make sure that with not only just Electron, any application you're building, um, to make sure that you have full visibility and coverage, to make sure that you're not, like, I mean, it's all our nightmare, right, that we have our product out for six months and then we realize that like all our users in Australia haven't been able to access the app and we just didn't know that because no one was reaching out. Um, so this is really gonna give you real time as it happens, um, alerts of what is, what's going on, what's going badly in your application. Um, and let's see. Oh, another emoji that I didn't know was gonna appear. So um, this is all to say that this tool exists. You can use it. We're 100% open source, totally free to use. Um, as I mentioned, all the features are built out in the open. You can follow and contribute on GitHub, um, at Chloe Hunnan on Twitter, at GetSentry on Twitter. Um, you can add it for two, with two lines of code for free. And tomorrow, if you like, camping. <laughs> um, we have a really fun meetup that we're throwing tomorrow if anybody's in the city with Slack actually um, at Slack's other location over near the Trader Joe's in Old Navy. Um, it's a camp themed meetup tomorrow will be on the topic of machine learning and chatbots. So if you have any interest in those things, definitely come and say hi and have some s'mores and hot chocolate with us. Um, I will put out these hand sanitizers, but if anybody has any questions, I will answer them. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, hand sanitizer is going on the table. Okay. Any questions? No. Both, front end and back end, yes. Yeah, usually um, you're using the JavaScript SDK to get it in there, but it'll be front end and back end. And we also have some specific um, uh, features in the, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? We, like for example, there's an integration with Session Stack, um, which is this really cool front end tool that'll actually show you exactly what was going on on the page when it happened. And we find that a lot of people use our product to um, make, UX and decisions specifically being like, oh, interesting, like people aren't noticing this button here, or maybe the reason that this bug is happening is because of this front end issue. So there's a lot of different ways to dive in deeper with the integrations as well. Sorry, what was that? Uh, front end and back end. Uh, I would say actually most people are using this on back end. Yeah. No. Any, we support all of the languages and, and, and mobile as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm here. Oh, yeah. How do we detect if an app crashed? Um, so basically by adding Sentry into your uh, JavaScript, it's listening to those and then it's sending real-time alerting um, 
however which way that you want to be alerted of that. So um, we have a Slack integration, we're at Slack. Um, we also have PagerDuty. There's also ways to kind of customize it in a sense where you're like, I only want to be alerted when 500 people experience this issue in, you know, the Netherlands. Um, there's really ways to make sure you're not getting just like this barrage of noise, which really can be the caveat of maybe building something on your own. But basically it's listening for those events and sending them, I mean, I can run it for you in this, uh, once I'm off stage here, but um, like the minute a, a, a error is, um, an error occurs, then it'll just pop up immediately. So it's just listening for those as they happen. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, that is a good question. Um, I have not thought about that personally. That's probably something I would talk to Jan about who built this out specifically. Um, I mean, typically, so, so we're a little bit different than maybe those applications like Full Story or something where we're like legitimately tracking every move that you make. Um, but uh, for us, it's less of a permissions thing because the logs are sort of like free reign, right? Like no matter what anybody's doing in an application, we are getting that logging info. So as far from as far as a privacy issue, it's less like user behavior, more logs. Does that mean, I don't know if that answers your question, but no, I mean, I guess I haven't personally thought about the logistics of that on a desktop application. Um, do you think it would be a little bit different than a, than a, like a website or? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. I, I definitely will ask um, Jan about that. He, he led the, the building of this particular SDK, but good question. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I'm, I'm here all night, so feel free to stop by and grab hand sanitizer and uh, see you tomorrow if you're in the city tomorrow. Thanks.